Iphigenia in Splot by Gary Owen. Holly Mazza and Kyle Drakes in conversation with lighting designer Rachel Mortimer. Holly and Kyle are sitting in the auditorium of a small cinema room that has blue chairs. Rachel is sat to their right and in the row in front. Holly is a white woman with medium length dark brown hair and wearing round framed glasses. Kyle is a mixed race student with curly dark brown hair. They are wearing a white short sleeve shirt. Rachel is a white woman with straight blonde hair and is wearing a grey top. Hi, my name's Holly Mazza. I'm the head of drama at the Fulham Boys School. And I'm joined by Kyle Drakes, an A-level student at the Fulham Boys School, and Rachel Mortimer, the lighting designer for Iphigenia in Splot at the Lyric Hammersmith. Hi, Rachel. Hi. So, we understand that this performance was originally put on at the Sherman Theatre in 2015. How has the lighting des design changed from then to this production in 2022? Uh, so the main change is that for this production, we're on a much bigger stage in a much bigger auditorium than where we, where we played in the original production. Um, so the set itself has grown to, to fill that stage. So the set, as you know, contains uh, a lot of lighting within it. Um, we call it the blind. It looks like a, a Venetian blind. It's made up of what were fluorescent tubes originally, but now they are LED tubes, um, LED strips within a, a plastic tube which diffuses the light. And so it still looks like the fluorescent tube, but it's uh, much more flexible in terms of how we can use it. We can fade and snap them much more subtly than we could with the fluorescent tubes. So what we're going to do with them is going to be, you know, much more detailed and exciting than what we did before, I think. Um, in terms of the stage lighting around that, it's based on the same design. So the kind of light that lights Effie's face is, is going to be very similar and she's still doing similar movements. So we're still highlighting, for example, she moves in a lot of diagonal lines across the stage. So we're still highlighting those with the stage lighting and we're still lighting her mainly with side lighting. Um, so that hasn't changed too much. We are also using the, the kind of space of the stage Although Effie herself doesn't use the whole stage, she's quite far downstage, but we're going to be lighting the floor upstage of the blind. And we're also going to be lighting the back wall. So we kind of got a sort of more, much more of a big expanse for those big moments. Like um, when Effie goes to Splot Beach, we really want to see this kind of like big landscape stretching away from her. Um, so we're going to see that big space that we've got at the stage here. The lighting design in this play is so beautifully symbolic. Uh, how did you come up with it and how collaborative were you with Haley? So Haley designed the set to look kind of like a, a Venetian blind that you might find in a, in a doctor's surgery or hospital, but it's sort of falling apart and a bit you know, run down, broken down. Through the tech process, Haley and I, along with Rachel, also worked out how we were going to actually use that to kind of give us the, the locations and feelings that we wanted um, throughout the play. So for example, when we're in the, in the club, we use it to kind of put us in that location. We've got the pulsing lights that you might find in a nightclub. Um, and when we're in the ambulance, we're using it to kind of um, represent the heart monitor of the baby. So we see the kind of, um, the lights sort of ripple down and then have that spike of the, of the heartbeat happening in the background. So you talked about the LEDs on stage, the blinds being able to do different things. How much control do you have over the individual lights on those blinds and what else can they do other than the pulsing? Each tube is individually controlled as a, as a line of LEDs within there. The whole line will come on together, but each tube is separate. So we can make them fade up and down individually, we can flash them, we can sort of ripple across them. And so every single one of them can be at a different level at any one time, or fading between levels. And the um, really good thing about them as well is that they react instantly. So we can do really crisp snaps up and down, and we can also just do really gentle slow fades as well.
And when you were planning your lighting design, did you have a system for when those snaps or fades would be used or was it on a scene by scene, moment by moment basis? It's on a scene by scene basis. So um, as we work through the sort of um, technical rehearsal, we're, we're being led by the, the storytelling in, within the script. It's, um, so it kind of has a really good rhythm to it. It's the tension builds up and builds up and then we kind of snap out of it. And that kind of, that's the sort of pattern that we go through a lot, a, a lot of times during the play. Um, so Effie herself will kind of slow her movements a lot of the times as well. As we get to this sort of tense moment, she's describing what ha what's happening and then she'll kind of snap into the next scene, like uh, bang a chair on the ground or something like that. So we've, we're kind of following her with the lighting and also with the sound um, to kind of build up the tension within the scene, either with like movement of the lights or just kind of dropping, dropping the lights down and like really focusing close on her. And then we can kind of snap back into a new scene with a different look. It's really interesting, this idea of the lighting echoing Effie's movements on stage. Yeah. We notice that there's a sort of a, a difference between Effie's vulnerability and the sort of angry, quite shocking version of Effie. Does the lighting match that or have you thought specifically about those differences in lighting as well? Not specifically about those differences, but I think the lighting matches that in the way that we do those timings, as in we kind of close down on her in the, in, within the focus of the lighting. So we're not lighting like around her or whatever, we're just really kind of doing a small light on her and then she'll kind of break out of the, the moment suddenly with her, with, you know, with her angry shouting or something and then we can like really kind of snap back to reality kind of thing. Uh, you mentioned earlier about the, the sound mixing with the lighting. Uh, with the fluorescent tube that's meant to represent the blinds, during some moments it sounded like there was like almost like the hum of the flu yeah. fluorescent tubes. Uh, was that like intentional to portray something to the audience or...? Um, I'm not sure if that's what Sam was intending with the, with the sound design. There's a lot of um, droning going on. I think that's... It could be the hum of the tubes, but it's really is kind of there to sort of disconcert the audience. So um, if I think of a, an example of a scene is like when Effie is given the, the flapjacks that contain the weed and then her head is like spinning and she doesn't know what's going on. And she suddenly feels all, all kind of dizzy and stuff. Um, so there's like a sort of thumping noise. It's sort of not very rhythmic. It's just kind of a bit random and then and we also kind of like ripple the lights in this weird way that's just kind of like portraying how her head is not straight at the time and also to try and yeah disconcert the audience so they're a bit like feeling a bit uncomfortable and then she kind of again shouts and we kind of snap out of that. It's been interesting to hear about how you used the fluorescent tube lighting to give Effie some sort of lighting, but what about the, the stage lighting you used to cover the whole stage? How did you use that to evoke an atmosphere towards the audience? So the majority of the show is lit with the side lighting. And, and the reason for that is to kind of keep the focus on Effie. So we're A, not lighting the actual structure of the set behind her too much so that we don't kind of wash that out we want the full impact of that and also that we're not lighting the floor too much around her so we're just kind of watching her sort of float over the floor and we've also got some of the tubes around the, on the floor as well so we want to kind of again keep the full impact of them against the black floor and just on terms of lighting effie the colors that you use are quite minimalist we don't change color a lot but when you do, it's really impactful. Can you talk us through the choices you made uh, with colour on stage? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the, the majority of the lights are a similar colour to the tubes, which is a cold white. 
So that's uh, evocative of the sort of harsh fluorescent lighting that you get in the hospital doctors. Um, the, the one moment where we change that is when Effie spends the one night that she spends with Lee and then we change to a really quite a sort of deep warm orange and that was initially based on um, the idea of a street light coming through the blind into the into the bedroom um, but also it's kind of the one moment of real joy that Effie has throughout the play and she's kind of you know found her purpose in being with Lee and so that's why that is different to the rest of the show. And in terms of, you mentioned the side lighting, the moment where Effie sort of goes to hell, where she's in between those two red chairs, it feels like there's this sort of down lighting which creates an almost heavenly glow over her in that moment. Um, what's the thought process behind the lighting there? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so at that moment, that is when all the other lights on stage go out. So up until then, we've been having like the, the heartbeat of the baby continuing through the tube lights. Um, and then of course, sadly, the baby dies. Um, so everything just stops. So we wanted to kind of really sort of contain Effie in this small pool of light so that she looked almost like she's at the bottom of a pit looking up, you know, how am I ever going to climb out of this, you know. And she's also just looking straight up into, into the sky. So her face is like perfectly lit with this light that's shining straight down on her. And the image, when you look at the whole stage as well, is just of this sort of thin beam of light that just lights her. And there's no other light around her, so it's like completely pitch black except for this one tiny tiny ray of light. Um, to on that topic about her being alone on that stage during that moment, I'd say, or I'd argue that a key theme of the entire play is the fact that Effie is like a character entirely alone. Even when she feels like she's not, when she meets um, Lee, it's evident to the audience that she is. How did you, using lighting throughout all of every single part of the play, how did you achieve that to the audience? So the side lighting helped with that a lot. I think, as I said, about not kind of lighting too much of the space around her. The, the blind is lit through, through most of the show, but in terms of the side lighting and also front lighting that we're lighting Effie with, we're, we're, we've kind of divided that into small areas of the stage and we kind of follow her around. So we just get a sort of small pool of light, which, which is wherever she is, but there's not too much anywhere else with the exception of the spot beach, which is where we're going to see the, the kind of bigger expanse of the stage. Um, but yeah, so that kind of makes her feel isolated because there's just darkness around her. So it's really interesting to hear your choices around colour. How much did you consider the different type of lanterns that you used for the stage lighting? Yeah, a lot. That's one of my one of my main duties as lighting designer is deciding which kind of lanterns for which, for which job. Um, the majority of lanterns on this show are profiles, and that just allows me to kind of really focus exactly where I want without spilling spilling sort of general light around um, in areas that we don't want. There are a few um, fresnels as well in the show when we want. Um, a sort of wider area lit. Um, that mainly happens at the end of the show after we've turned the blind off. That, that's when we get the sort of full width of the stage lit as Effie kind of makes her final challenge to the audience. And in terms of the moments, for example, when she goes down to the sea and you get a sort of softer glow, how has that been achieved? Um, that's just to do with sort of balancing the levels of the lights. It's still the same side lights that we're using throughout. Um, but also when she when she sits on the floor, she's actually just behind one of the tubes which is on the floor, so that um, when she's standing, they don't have as much of, of an impact on her face. But when she's sitting, then you really see the, the kind of like up lighting of that on her face, as if it's the, the moonlight reflecting back from the sea. Obviously, when you're doing GCC and A-level drama, the idea for colour with lighting is very simple with like 
basic colors, meaning basic emotions like red is angry and blue is sad. Um, how do you develop those choices from a foundational understanding into something higher, such as like a professional understanding? Is it influenced by anything like color theory, for example? Um, not, f not for me personally. I think I've just kind of learned those things through experience and trying, trying out different things. And obviously it depends on the show that you're working on and the director that you're working with, how they want to represent a certain scene or a certain you know, emotional state of the, of the characters. With Iphigenia, obviously we are, we are kind of using the colours in those ways. We've got like, it's, it's quite a bleak kind of a, a show. And we've and we've stripped that right back to this um, this harsh cold white light which which pervades throughout the whole show, except for that that one moment of sort of happiness in the middle. Is it instinct that makes you decide what colours to choose to light a show? Is it your experience of watching other shows? How do you get to a standard where you feel confident in selecting colour for performance? I think you need the kind of um, basic um, grounding that you're talking about, because I think that's really important to kind of know that these these colours you know, do kind of automatically evoke those kind of feelings within you. As you get more experience and you kind of see other shows or you do you do shows yourself, you'll learn what what works well because you're also working with things like set colours and costume colours and um, different performer skin colours and, that, and they're all kind of things that you have to factor in to how, how a colour that you're going to use um, will look on stage. Do you find that changes between venues at all? It can do, yeah, because it will depend on um, the, the distance away that the light is or the kind of lights that that venue has. Obviously, we're working a lot with um, LED lights versus tungsten lights, and that will change how the how a colour um, renders on stage. If I wanted to go away and light a show right now, and obviously I don't have access to a lighting rig or anything to do with the colours, how would I go about doing that with such little experience? I think you could potentially use your use your phone or your computer to to kind of create something. I think it would be quite quite exciting actually to have a go at using maybe a computer screen and just have like a blank screen in different colours and you can set that up and record yourself with your phone and see how the different colours affect your your face and that kind of thing. And also um, even if you don't have different colours you can try different angles. You try lighting yourself upwards, downwards from the side, just kind of have a look at that and see how how that the different directions and the different colours affect how you look. There's some useful tips for if I was to make it right now, but um, let's say I wanted to take it into a professional field of work. How would I go about doing that? Uh, is there any way you could share your own story? I started by going to university and I actually studied architecture, but uh, following that I didn't want to continue for the further study required to become an architect, so instead I changed direction slightly and did a stage management and technical theatre course at Guildford School of Acting. Um, so on that course we got to do a little bit of everything. We did stage management, we did lighting, sound. Um, I did a lighting design when I was there, really enjoyed it. And from there I applied for jobs as a technician, eventually ending up working as a technician at the Sherman Theatre in Cardiff. I think the, the pathways are there to kind of, you can, you can do it through studying like I did. Um, there, there are degree courses in technical theatre that you can do. Um, there are also apprenticeships now that you can do at a lot of different theatres around the country. Um, and you can also just start working at your, at your local theatre. If there's an amateur dramatic society, you can get involved with them. You can offer yourself a sort of crew for shows and just get, get started like that and start kind of learning on the job. Thanks, Rachel. That concludes our interview with Rachel Mortimer, the lighting designer for Iphigenia in Splot. If you're coming to see the play, we hope that these little details enhance the production for you. Bye. <laughs>